Hello, this is Ed Chapman. In this video cast, we're going to go over the responses cells make to the different signals that they receive. Now, before you proceed, make sure you can answer these three questions about uh, transduction of cell signaling. All right, cells respond generally to signaling pathways by either regulating the transcription of DNA into messenger RNA, which is a fancy way of saying switching genes on or off, or something happens in the cytoplasm, um, something changes in the cytoplasm. For example, cell signaling pathways that might lead to cell self-destruction or apoptosis. Okay, let's look at these. Now, inside the nucleus, if you remember, the nucleus stores the genetic material or the DNA of cells, and this is made up of thousands or tens of thousands of genes that are waiting to be switched on or switched off in response to different signals. So when a gene is activated, for example, by a growth factor, it, goes, it produces a response. So let's look at the steps of that. Okay, let's say that there is a growth factor that's released into, let's say you add it to a test tube of growing cells. Okay, this growth factor is a little signaling molecule, otherwise known as a ligand. It's going to interact with a receptor protein on the surface of certain cells. Okay, this receptor protein is going to change shape and trigger a phosphorylation cascade, which is going to transduce or transduct the signal through the cytoplasm. Okay, it's going to activate a transcription factor in the nucleus. Okay, a little small protein is going to get turned on which is then going to activate a gene. And when, by we mean gene, when we say gene activation here, we mean that the gene is now ready to be transcribed or um, changed into a piece of messenger RNA. And so once transcription is finished, we now have a piece of messenger RNA. The messenger RNA, for example, could be a mating factor. And this mating factor could then signal yeast cells to mate and grow, like we first talked about in the very first um, video cast for this unit. Okay, so what I want you guys to see in this chain of events here is that a gene, a certain gene, a specific gene can be activated by a certain signal by way of a transduction pathway that activates uh, a gene or switches on a gene in the nucleus. Now, all these different cellular responses have to be fine-tuned, and there are three ways of tuning the response that you guys need to be familiar with. The signal can be amplified. Uh, the, single, the signals are very specific, so they have a quality called specificity, and the signals have to be coordinated with other responses. Okay? All right, now amplification is pretty straightforward. Uh, when you amplify something, you make it bigger, or you turn up the volume, for example, on your television or on your iPod or something. So let's look at amplification. So here we have a signal molecule, all right, here represented by this blue triangle. All right, we have its receptor protein here. This is the cell membrane, and this is, of course, the active site where the um, protein's going to be, um, where it's going to dock, so to speak. Okay, so let's say that this um, signal ligand molecule docks with the receptor. It causes a protein to change in some way, change shape in some way. This could be a G protein, for example. That then triggers some cytoplasmic proteins to change, probably to be phosphorylated then those can trigger a whole series. So notice as we have one signal here producing a shape change here, two here, and now we're up to eight. So see how the signal is getting bigger? And all these signals can then lead to many, 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 many different responses. So it's like one domino knocking over many dominoes in an ever-growing or ever-amplifying um, signal transduction pathway. All right. This is very common when you want a, one little signal to cause something big to happen very quickly. All right. Specificity is just like it sounds. It involves the word specific. So let's say that you have, oh, everybody has different cells in your body. You have, for example, liver cells, you have heart cells, and you have stomach cells. Now, all of these cells are descended from the original zygote that made you. So that means they all contain exactly the same DNA, the exactly the same genes. So how can a signal molecule, how can cells become different from each other or respond in different ways? And this has to do with the idea of specificity. So for example, let's say that the signal molecule docks with the receptor on a liver cell. Now the liver cell's response is going to be to break down glycogen. Okay, let's say that this signal molecule here is epinephrine. For example, we know that's what epinephrine does. That's what Sullivan was studying. All right. What if this signal molecule docks with a receptor on a heart cell? Okay, epinephrine causes heart cells to undergo a different or produce a different response. In the case of heart cells, they start contracting faster. 
All right, how about a stomach cell? Well, stomach cells don't have the receptor for epinephrine, so they can't hear the signal and they don't do anything. All right, so can you see how uh, in your body, S signals can be specific to different cells. For example, the epinephrine signal can be heard by liver cells and heart cells, but not stomach cells. And even among cells that can, can receive the signal, they may produce completely different responses. That's the idea of specificity. And finally, apoptosis is a special signal that tells a cell to die, okay? It's sometimes called programmed cell death. And this was worked out in very good detail in a biological model called C. elegans, which is a type of nematode worm that lives in the soil. It's one of the most common organisms on the planet. It's a very small multicellular worm, and it has a very small genome, a very small number of genes. And scientists have worked out what each one of its genes do. Its entire genome has been sequenced and the function of all its genes is very close to being completely figured out. So it's a perfect model for studying things like cell signaling. So let's look at an example from C. elegans. Here you have a, the cell membrane of one of these worms cells. Okay, here you have a mitochondrion and associated with the mitochondrion is a surface protein. Now if there's no apoptotic or ap apoptosis quote death signal unquote, the protein right here in blue associated with the mitochondrion is active. And what this protein does is it produces signals that repress other proteins that could cause the cell to die. All right, now let's say that the apoptotic signal is, is received and now this mitochondrial protein has become um, inactivated. So if it's inactive, it no longer represses some cytoplasmic proteins and because these guys are no longer repressed, they can then produce a signal that leads to the cell, to cell death. All right, now why would a cell want to die or why would a body want to kill off a cell? Well, let's look at a mouse paw, or like the hand equivalent of a little mouse. Here we have a paddle-shaped growing paw, and you'll notice as the, the days proceed, the little mouse paw grows fingers or toes, um, however you want to name them. And in order for that to happen, cells here labeled in a lighter green have to have receptors and hear or receive a signal that causes them to apoptose or to die. All right. So as these cells between the fingers apoptose or die, they separate the digits in the individual fingers. And that's part of the normal development of a mouse, controlled by or assisted by the programmed death of certain cells. All right. Thanks for listening. And we're going to start with chapter 12 next in the next uh, videocast.